If you're serious about increasing your credit score, you need to watch this video. In fact, the strategy that we'll be sharing with you, I've used it to help me get a pretty high credit score, as you can see over here. What's up, winners? My name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit, starting out by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks to Start Engine for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. In this video, I'll talk about the AZO method. I will go over what it is, why the strategy works, and whether or not you should use it. So without further ado, let's break down the AZO method. What this acronym stands for is all zero except one, meaning that all you would have to do is pay off all but one of your credit cards in full by your statement closing date. But the one that you keep a balance on should have a credit utilization of less than 10%. Ideally, the lower the better. By doing this, you can squeeze out extra points on your credit score. Here are a few advantages using the AZO method. First, if you're in a market for a mortgage or a car loan, increasing your credit score saves you thousands in the long run. You get a better interest rate on big ticket items. Another advantage is that having fewer accounts with balances ensure that your credit score should improve. It is so much easier to control and figure out your utilization rate on one card instead of juggling multiple credit cards. To truly understand why this method works, you have to understand how credit utilization affects your credit score. The only model that you need to worry about is your FICO score. This is the score that most creditors and lenders will be looking at. Now here's a breakdown of the FICO score. Payment history accounts for 35%, amounts owed counts for 30%, length of credit history is 15%, credit mix counts for 10%, and new credit counts for 10%. So by knowing this, the amounts owed portion makes up 30% of your overall score. But this portion even gets a little bit more specific than that. Some items that make up your amounts owed portion is your credit utilization, amounts owed on installment loans, and also the type of accounts that have balances. But credit card debt is one of the most detrimental things in this portion. Other items such as installment lines of credit, like loans, tend to benefit your credit score more when they're active. But for revolving lines of credit such as credit cards, any type of utilization typically brings your score down. The good news is that you can change your credit utilization quickly and make a great impact on your credit score. Your credit utilization rate is simply the statement balance compared to your overall credit limit. So how exactly do you find out what is your credit utilization? With a bit of basic math, you can figure it out. All you gotta do is take your statement balance and divide it by the credit limit then times it by 100. Another way to simply know your credit utilization is using a third party app. The one that I use frequently is Credit Karma. Link in the description if you guys want to download it. It's 100% free. All you would have to do is click on one of your credit scores, then tap on credit utilization. From there, you can see the utilization on all of your credit cards. But now you know that having a high credit utilization rate is much worse for your credit than having low utilization. But there's no hard rule when your utilization hurts your score. My suggestion has always been the lower, the better. That's where the AZO method comes into play. When you pay down your balances all zero except one, you significantly decrease your overall credit utilization. FICO researched in 2019 and found that people with a credit score north of 800 had a utilization rate of less than 10%. This makes sense because anytime that you have more debt, creditors and lenders will suspect that you have a higher probability of not paying this debt back. Remember guys, the name of the game is learning how to leverage credit and debt to your own advantage. The ultra wealthy have this all figured out. So that brings me to today's sponsor, Start Engine. Did you ever wish that you could invest into startups in their infancy like Uber or Airbnb? At the making of this video, you can join a community of 600,000 prospective investors who are actively seeking to increase their wealth by investing in startups. Start Engine will allow you to invest into early growth companies that you are passionate about. This could be renewable energy, healthcare, and so many others. This is different from Kickstarter though. This is not an exchange for a product but instead you're buying a piece of a company. So if a company grows and becomes more successful, your investment holdings may become more valuable. Everyone can be an investor, not just savvy VCs or private equity firms. For as little as $100, you can start investing today using the link below. But if you have no clue where to even start, I'll link a free exclusive article detailing five things investors should know before investing to startups. This way you have a better understanding of how crowdfunding works, why invest, and how diversifying in startups can add potential upside to your portfolio. Again, all of the links are in the description. Now back to the video. Let's talk about the limitations of the AZO method. Probably the biggest limitation is that you probably want to use just one credit card. Even though this method does not call for you to only use one credit card, but it'll be much simpler if you could just manage one credit card balance. Another thing that you have to keep into consideration is that if you were to use this strategy, it would probably be best if you have a high credit card limit or remember to pay off your balance much sooner. But if you're someone with a smaller credit card limit, then you gotta make sure before the statement cycle ends to stay under 10% credit utilization. Additionally, whatever balance that you leave remaining on the statement closing date, make sure that you pay it in full when it does get reported. Because any balance past the payment due date will cause you to accrue interest. Since you're stuck around this far, let's talk about another bill paying strategy that many believe work. This one is called the 15-3 credit card payment hack. Essentially, you make two credit card payments per month. It's a simple two-step process. Step one is to make one payment 15 days before your statement date. 
And step two is to make sure that the second payment is three days before it. And that's it. An important note is that your statement date is not the same as your payment date, which is the billing date that's up to 25 days after your statement date. Here's how the 15-3 credit card payment hack will work in real life. Imagine that your card has a limit of $1,000 and your billing cycle is 30 days. Your billing cycle is from November 15th to December 15th and you have a balance of $500 on your card. You decide to make a $250 payment to reduce your balance to $250. Over the next 12 days, you spend another $250 on the card. On December 12th, you make a second $500 payment and reduce your balance to zero. In the next three days before your statement date, you spend another $50. That $50 amount is what your card issuer would record and report as your balance for that billing period. Now let's talk about why the 15-3 credit card payment hack works. When done correctly, this trick improves your credit score but not for the reasons that you may think. Some people think that this hack works because it lets you report two payments each month to the credit bureaus rather than one. Therefore, this will further help your payment history. Unfortunately, this is not how payment history works. Whether or not you make two payments or 15 payments in one month, this will not benefit your payment history. The only reason why this hack works is that it reduces your overall credit utilization. The lower the balance that you have when your statement cycle closes, this will be the number that gets reported to the credit bureau. So in all honesty, this is really not a hack. You're essentially just prepaying your balance much sooner so it's easier to have a lower statement balance. You would have the same effect if you were to pay off your current balance in full a couple days before the cycle ends. So with both of these hacks, isn't it just easier to have a zero statement balance instead? If you were to follow this path, you can end up with one out of two outcomes. If you consistently have zero balances, this could indicate that you are uninterested in using the credit that you currently have. A zero balance, on the other hand, can indicate that you are a freaking credit card user who pays your credit cards in full as soon as you complete a transaction. So let's pretend that you have a Capital One credit card. Even if you use this credit card for all of your transactions and always pay on time, the credit bureaus continuously show that you have a zero balance. Is Capital One aware that you're making purchases with your credit card? Of course they do. They are the credit card company and they are aware of every transaction you make even when and where you do it. Only lenders that are pulling your credit that are not affiliated with your credit card provider are unable to see whether or not you use that credit card. Based on my own personal experience, if you do not use a credit card for six months to a year, you're more likely to have your account closed by the issuer. And most of the time, you won't even be notified once the account is terminated. Instead, you just notice a decline on your credit score from one of your apps. So even with the AZO method, you would still want to use your other credit cards every now and then to prevent them from being closed prematurely. As I have more and more credit cards, I tend to keep my balance at zero nowadays. You really gotta find a strategy that you can stick to. If you were to adopt the AZO method, it will be much simpler to focus on one credit card balance rather than multiples. The one thing that you always have to keep in mind is the balance that you leave after the statement closing date. Because after that date, this will be the amount that gets reported to the credit bureaus, which makes up your credit score. So the amount that you do leave, try to keep it under 10% of that credit card limit or lower. It's important to remember the fundamentals of improving your credit score. Nothing is more important than paying your bills on time and keeping your amount owed at a minimum. So on the topic of increasing your credit score, watch this video over here of why you should never pay a loan off early. See you over there.